I can't say what I just do. I just came across this Twitter uh, news that uh, Caster Semenya is uh, court rules. Caster Semenya can compete in the Olympics without lowering her natural hormone levels. So, um, so th this is a link to the, uh, it's called the IAAF, publishes briefing notes and Q&A on female eligibility regulations. So I, I brief, uh, I skimmed this. So, the regulations, uh, you know, with requiring uh, the reduction of testosterone applies. It's called the DSD regulations. I think the DSC, DSD stands for Disordered Sexual Development. DSD. Oh, disorders of sexual development. Uh, let's go to the Wikipedia. DSD uh, medical conditions uh, I'm reading from Wikipedia involving the reproductive system more specifically these terms refer to quote congenital conditions in which development of chromosomal con gonadal or anatomical sex is atypical So there's some controversy over the term. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, so that's what it applies to. So uh, I'm reading from the uh, I double A F. DSD regulations. Uh, question one Which athletes fall under the DSD regulations? The DSD regulations only apply to individuals who are, I'm reading from this, legally female or intersex and who have one of a number, who have not one of a certain number of specified DSDs which mean that they have male chromosomes XY not female chromosomes see right there they're using gendered language male female that's a problem that is a problem testes not ovaries circulating testosterone in the again male range you see how the wording is very uh, binary <laughs> uh, and not the much lower female range the ability to make use of that testosterone circling within their bodies they are they are androgen sensitive so anyway so this This is an interesting question. Question 8. Why are you focused on testosterone rather than other genetic differences like leg length, height, or arm span? And this is their response. It is correct that elite sport celebrates and rewards genetic differences. Height, wingspan, fast twitch muscles, etc. 
The only genetic difference that elite sport does not celebrate is the genetic difference between men, <laughs> again, <laughs> again, men, with male chromosomes XY and women with female chromosomes XX. Okay. That is because XY chromosomes produce testes rather than ovaries, which produces testosterone in the typical male range rather than testosterone in the much lower typical female range, which is what produces men's bigger and stronger bones and muscles in higher hemoglobin levels, which gives, gives them a massive performance advantage over men. There is a problem with the terminology here, because Castor Semenya, Semenya, I don't know how to pronounce the name, she is a woman. Okay, she doesn't identify as a woman. <laughs> she is a woman. Uh, in her case, she, you know, in her case, yes, she has XY chromosomes, but she also has, uh, she has a DSD uh, characteristics. Okay, they're basically saying men and women have two separate categories in sport because, uh, you know, uh, men have, you know, because of the testosterone gives rise to certain physical traits that uh, give them, you know, an advantage over generally female. Um, This is a problem. Look. look. Look at this, the way they write this. Uh, uh, question 11. What happens if these regulations are challenged under the national laws of different countries? Uh, and I quote, The CAS has found the discrimination in these regulations treating 46 XY DSD women okay they're calling them women differently from other women <laughs> to be justified because they are a necessary reasonable and proportionate means of achieving the legitimate objective of pro protecting fair competition in the female classification in short it found that in this context quote Biological reality trumps gender identity, end quote. That ruling should be respected and enforced by the national court. Okay, so what is the biological reality they're referring to? See, they won't say it, but they're, they're sort of, without explicitly saying it, what they, what they actually are, when they say this, biological reality trumps gender identity, what they're saying is, Castor Semenya is, is, as, is as a matter of biological reality a man or a male. <laughs> uh, and so this is, you know, it, it is transphobic and uh, there's another statement in here where I want to point that out. Oh look, here we go. Question 6. What is your response th to the claims about the harmful side effects of taking the medication you recommend? And going down. Quote, for many 46 X Y individuals with one of these DSDs, <sighs> look at that. Look at how they're saying it. For many 46XY individuals with one of these DSEs, that sounds very gender neutral, right? To say 46XY individuals 
with one of these DSDs. That sounds very gender neutral. Okay, I can accept that. And then they say, and a female gender identity. Such treatment is the recognized standard of care and the medication helps to change their body to better reflect their chosen gender. So there, in that statement, they're implying that gender is something someone chooses. It's not something, it's not who they are. So that, that would be like saying, Casta Semenya is choosing to be a woman. It's, a, it's her choice. It's not who she is, but it's her choice. So that is a problematic concept. Um, trans people don't choose to be who they are. They might choose to transition, they might choose to take hormones, but they don't choose to be who they are. So that is a problematic wording. And, and, and the, look at the way... Uh, look at this statement. Such treatment is the recognized standard of care, which is uh, lowering uh, testosterone. <laughs> but it is a recognized standard of care for trans women. But uh, not all trans women uh, take hormones, you know. <laughs> and the medication helps to change their body to better reflect that. This is the most problematic statement. The medication helps to change their body to better reflect their chosen gender. You know what that statement means? It means that, first of all, the chosen gender, leaving that, that problematic thing aside, what they're saying is, if you're going to be a woman, you have to look like a woman. <laughs> what they're implying there is, women look a certain way. That is uh, saying that if you're going to be a woman, you have to be like, you know, have a, you can't be too muscular. <laughs> that is such a, um, that is, um, you know, using stereotypes of what a woman should look like. What if there are cis women out there who, who prefer to look muscular, who like, you know, who like being muscular and stuff? Are they less of a woman because they look very muscular? So first of all, there is that problem of saying that women should look like a certain way or women should, uh, like women can't be strong. And, you know, if, if a woman is, a, is as strong as a man, let's say you have a very, like a, a weak man, <laughs> like not very physically, uh, strong and you have a quite a physically strong woman um, it does this mean that the man is feminine because he's not that strong and does this mean that the woman is, is a man because she's too strong I mean this, can you see the problem problem in this in what they're doing here they're trying to appeal to stereotypes of what they think a woman is and they, 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 there is some kind of a racist undertone to this because most physical, like most women from Africa and, you know, like a, you know, the so-called problematic third world, whatever, they usually have a very physical, like they, they have very muscular bodies. And whereas women from, you know, Europe, you know, Western countries, you know, white women, uh, <laughs> European countries, they usually, usually don't look very muscular, but you know, some of them may, may look like that. Anyway, so there is a, that racist undertone to this. Um, so can't you, so by, I think what the, uh, let me look at that tweet. Uh, Okay, this is a tweet by someone called uh, Roger Pikel Jr. He, he seems to be a scientist or something. Uh, anyway, this is his, uh, he quotes from the, 
something is going on. It says Swiss court dismissed the appeal despite finding that the WA know, regulations seriously violate Castor's physical integrity because the required hormonal drug intervention is not medically indicated, has negative health effects, and is not based on the athlete's free consent. Uh, see, someone says, it's discrimination thinly disguised as being fair. She's African, shows so she's held to different standards of femininity and her biological makeup just happens to give her an edge in track and field which of course means she's somehow less of a quote woman than other women pure bs mm. the problem in these guidelines is that um, is first of all the the what where they say male chromosome by saying male chromosomes and not female you see castor semenya does not have male chromosomes typical image she she has x y d s d now d s d means this uh, you know d s d uh you know it's it's like an intersex condition so she is not like a man even by a lot even on a chromosomal level she is not a man okay this is not someone you're not dealing with someone who is xy without dsc you're dealing with someone who's xy and who has these uh intersex characteristics so you're basically what what this decision is doing is it's, it's basically trying to affirm the binary male female and trying to deny people who are intersex the uh it's a it's a, a, a human rights violation because you're not allowing you're not allowing uh, intersex people to participate in sports. Um, let's go to the last, uh, and the reason I say that is because. If you look at this, uh, <laughs> this is I double A F and human rights position. The IWAF is not a public authority exercising state powers, as I'm reading, but rather a private body exercising private contractual powers. Therefore, it is not subject to human rights instruments such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights or the European Convention on Human Rights. And go down. In fact, it is that commitment to equal treatment that mandates provision of a female only. Look at that, look at that, look at that of a female-only competition category on the basis that the biological differences between the sexes mean this is the only way to guarantee female athletes an equal chance to excel and to secure the social and other goods that elite sport can offer. So does this mean Castor Semenya is not a female? Is that what they're saying? If Castor Semenya is not, cannot participate in the female category unless she lowers her testosterone levels does this mean that Castor Semenya is not a female like like uh, They are, um, no, they are unfairly discriminating against caste disseminia and intersex athletes. Uh, let's take it another way. What about um, those with uh, 
X. What about those with XY chromosomes, but who have a DSD that that makes it that makes it so that they have abnormally low levels of testosterone? Does this mean that this per does such a person uh, can such a person be allowed to take uh, testosterone? supplements in order to raise their testosterone level to the normal male range i mean if they're going to ask intersex people like caster semenya to lower their testosterone level in order to compete in female can they allow intersex people uh, to increase their testosterone level in order to participate in male uh, but even someone who is an XX uh, with the DSD, can they increase their, uh, can they take testosterone supplements? I mean, if you're going to uh, say people should lower their testosterone, can buy it? That means it, it should also be possible for someone to increase their uh, testosterone if they, uh, for instance, are male, uh, are a man, and they want to compete in the male category. Yeah? That's an interesting question, but you know, that's, that's something to consider. Um, but the fact that um, this um, biological reality tum trumps gender identity, and see how that is a political statement. Because the biological reality in this case is that Casta Semenya is someone who is who has an XY chromosome but who has an intersex condition. She is not a man. You know, she is not a man. She, um, um, even on a biological level, she is not a man. Um, let me just summarize this. I have, I've pointed to some uh, examples of how the wording, the terminology, uh, the attempt to preserve the gender binary is um, shows a bias towards intersex people. Uh, this does not even apply to trans people. This has nothing to do with uh, trans people. This has to do with intersex people, you see? So this has nothing to do with trans people. If you're a trans woman, you have to lower your testosterone level. If you're a trans man, I assume you can raise your testosterone. I mean, I haven't really uh, looked into that. But this is uh, specifically towards intersex uh, people and specifically towards intersex uh, women. women. Um, so what is the biological reality? The biological reality seems to be that if you have higher levels of testosterone, naturally higher levels of testosterone, it's not because you're taking any supplements, but if you na have naturally high levels of testosterone, you have to, you know, lower it or something. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. That just doesn't feel right to me. It's it, it, because uh, when they say the only genetic difference that elite sport does not celebrate is the genetic difference between men and women. That's true. That may be true. That is true. Yes. But how does that apply to Casta Semenya? She is not a man. She does not have male chromosomes. She has XY chromosomes, DSD. See how they're, they're saying, like they're saying, yeah, yes, the statement the, that the only genetic difference that elite st sport does not celebrate is the genetic difference between men and women. That is a that is a true statement. Okay. 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 Look, everyone agrees there must be separate male and female competition categories precisely to ensure that this genetic difference is not outcome determinative. You know, I'm just sort of skipping some stuff. 
Now here's what they say. We regulate 46XY DST athletes because they have that same genetic difference. If that genetic difference makes it unfair for men to compete against women, it also obviously makes it unfair for 46XY women to compete against women. I don't know. I, I still don't. Um, I cannot help but uh, feel. I know my feelings is it's not a good way to make an argument, but uh, you know we don't have to be rational, completely rational about it. I mean, you know, uh, let's let's deal with the emotional impact as well. Um, There is something else I want to point out here. See, these regulations, they only apply to people who are competing at the high, at the international level. Okay? Let me read that. Okay. Uh, the question, uh, why do the regulations only cover events between 400 meters to the mile? Taking, uh, th this is what they say, uh, therefore taking a conservative approach to allow DSD athletes to compete in the gender with which they identify. <laughs> this is wrong. That kind of wording applies to trans people. It does not apply to inter. Casta Seminar is not trans. Th this is the problem. They're trying to make it out like Casta Seminar is trans, but she is not trans. This is the problem. They're using concepts associated with trans people to Casta Seminar. She. This is the problem. And the, again, the, another example where they try to mm, imply that the way they try to take concepts associated with trans people and, up, and, and try to apply the Casa Semina is here in question two um, under the question why do such athletes have to what does such athletes have to do to be eligible to compete in the female classification at the end it says Importantly, lowering testosterone is, is in one of these ways is a recognized gender affirming standard of care for any individual athlete or not who is 46XY but has a female gender. <laughs> yeah, that might be for trans people, but th th that's not who Casta Semina is not trans. You see what the problem is? They're trying to. Um, there is a political dimension to this issue. I think the, the set in the background of where you know trans people are getting a lot of recognition, uh, and there's this all this reaction against trans people, you know, like being seen as who they are, you know, like saying, "Oh, biological reality trumps gender identity." <laughs> I can't believe they put that quote in there. That might be something like a, a transphobe might say. Fine, but. Casta Semia is not trans. You see what the difference here? They're taking uh, concepts associated with transitioning, such as lowering testosterone, gender affirming standard of care. Yeah, but that might be what you apply to someone like a trans woman or a trans man, but Casta Semia is neither. She is a woman. She is intersex. She's a woman. She's not trans. They're conflating the two. This is a problem. Uh, and then, uh, and another reason, and, and this is just to try and stop her from g keeping her gold medals or whatever. 
they say, they say the new regulations only apply to track events between 400 meter and one mile and, and only to international competitions see that they don't care if you uh, on a national level if you, if you want to like you know run the 400 meters and, and and in your in your country you win like you become the top athlete or whatever they don't give a damn about that why um because let's let's think about it if you are from africa and then you win the medal in africa who cares you're probably competing with other africans they don't give a shit but if you're going to go to the international level oh you're from africa you're going to compete with women from europe holy shit no we got to stop you there there no 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 you got to bring your testosterone level down so we can give the other white women uh, an opportunity to win <laughs> You see how racist that is. <laughs> there is this implied racism in there. Um, that is racist. I didn't think about that, but um, the fact that they only apply this to international competitions uh, shows that why do they only apply to international competitions? I mean, if they want to like be fair about this, shouldn't it apply to everywhere? I mean, why don't they give a damn whether it uh, whether you uh, win in your own country or not? <laughs> Can you not see the implied racism there? Because they don't care if you are from Africa or wherever if you're from, and then you win some tournament in Africa. Fine, go ahead, do what you want. But if you're going to compete with, you know white women in the in, with the European women you know the, oh, oh, oh then you gotta step back there uh, but then again in, in um, if you're from for instance uh, Canada I mean you, there are a lot of black women in Canada and all that so um, another reason might be um, because this is an international competition, this is like the highest of the highest. They don't want um, like someone with. Uh, they they don't want uh, someone with an intersex condition uh, getting the highest of the highest medal. You know, that might be like oh, you know, just sort of like. It's sort of like saying, it's sort of like admitting that yes, these regulations are harsh uh, in order to make it, uh, give these intersex people some way to compete. We will let them compete at the national level, but when it, when it's, when it comes down to it, you know, when it's, uh, when it, in the, at the important international level, no, we're not going to let them compete. But nationally, okay, fine, let them do it. So they, they sort of, they're sort of uh, giving away that, yes, this is a bit harsh and discriminatory. I mean, if they, if they, if they truly thought, oh, this is the most fair thing to do, it is most reasonable, proportionate, they should apply it all the way, whether it's international, national, whatever. But, they're only applying it to international and not to national so it cannot be reasonable and proportionate if you're only going to apply it to international and, and not national and if you truly believe it's reasonable and proportionate you should apply everywhere but why aren't they applying it to national because they realize that the regulations are controversial they they are they might have you know they might have these racist undertones or whatever cast i, I want to say again casta semenya is not a trans woman she is a woman she is a woman with an intersex condition she does not identify as a woman she's she's not choosing to identify as a woman she is a woman casta semenya is not a trans woman She is not, she doesn't need any gender, she does not, Casta Semenya does not want to take testosterone, whatever, blockers or, or whatever. She's happy the way she is. She was born that way. And she's happy the way she is. She doesn't want any gender affirming care because she is a, a, a woman and she just happens to have this uh, genetic condition. And your argument that, uh, your argument you know that um 
that the, the that there is a two category male and female and therefore and uh, and what makes it different is it testosterone I don't know I mean well it seems like a compelling argument you are denying you are forcing Casta Semenya to choose between uh, lowering a, a con to you're, you're forcing Casta Semenya to nerf herself basically to compromise her physical body in order to compete in a category to which she belongs you know she doesn't choose to be a woman she's a woman she's an intersex woman um, so this is not a uh, this is a very problematic thing okay um, anyway so I'll leave it there yeah. shit there's 36 minutes uh, I will link the um, regulations and maybe the tweet. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't read the. Um, I only read a few tweets and then I only read. I didn't read the link to the uh, article in the tweet. Uh, anyway. <laughs>